Hi, I wanted to cover one of the Ask Lisa questions that was coming up probably more than any other, not just on the blog, but through my website and through Facebook and everywhere. I'm getting this question a lot. I want to be a makeup artist. I'd like to do theatre, television and fashion. They're all completely separate industries and um, you have to really focus on one because each industry has different groups of people and different ways of working and different ways of training to get in there and different ways of navigating your way in into those industries so you can't really expect to excel I mean good luck you know to do well in several areas but I don't think it's possible I think at least initially when you're starting your career, you need to focus on one thing if you're going to become successful in that field. And that's really what I'm addressing, becoming successful as a makeup artist and really um, achieving your goals and achieving your dreams. So the different types of makeup artists are, um, there's film makeup artists. So even within film, there's different types. So there's people that do prosthetics and really focus and make that what they're known for so prosthetic specialists then there's regular film makeup artists you know some people get known just for one type you know period dramas or um, science fiction or I mean most people do a bit of everything apart from prosthetic you know real specialists that just get uh, you know are known by all the big directors that when they're doing something with prosthetics there's a group of people that you know are absolutely amazing kind of oscar winners and so yeah prosthetics regular film makeup um then there's television which there is a little bit of crossover between television and film but i think that initially you want to focus on one or the other because it, they are different industries television and f and feature films are different industries so with television Years ago, television used to be employed by the BBC or by the, the network. Nowadays, it's a lot more freelance. Um, so you would really want to get in with the production companies and find out who the production companies are and get in with assisting people who are already successful in television. And then you can get contracts. So whether you get a contract to do, you know, I don't know... A a period drama with the BBC or different shows. Um, so that's another type. So television. Then there's music industry. And you think music and fashion, the same thing. But actually, there is a bit of lap of an overlap between them. But they're, again, quite different industries. Because with fashion, you've got you've got, you, you know, the photographers and the editors and those sorts of people. With music, it's music video directors, music record labels and all of that. So again, it's a different industry and slightly different worlds, although there is some overlap between the two. There are people that just do music and that's their thing and they're known by all the music video directors and they're known by all the um, labels and they're booked you know, for new artists and so on, so on and so forth. With fashion, there's, um, again, these are all freelance careers, so absolutely music is a freelance career, fashion is a freelance career. There's really high fashion, which is doing makeup for the shows, doing magazine work, editorial work, um, A-list celebrities, you know, because that tends to be quite a big crossover these days between fashion and celebrity because now celebrities are on magazine covers so you will do that you know you'll end up doing quite a lot of that and also the red carpet thing tends to be more the fashion end of things um, and then there's also the kind of photographic makeup artists that do more of the commercial work so the catalogues and um, the less high fashion magazines the more kind of mainstream and more commercial magazines often people who do that do hair and makeup as well so sometimes it's quite good to do that okay next up is bridal makeup and you can set up a business from home that specializes just in weddings but also special occasions because i think nowadays lots of people book makeup artists for i don't know anniversary parties and prom and all kinds of things it's it's a, it's a growing industry so yeah you can set up a business where you specialize in bridal makeup and special occasion makeup so that's another kind of career you can have 
Then there's the working for a makeup company and there's various levels. You can work on a counter and you get to do makeovers on different people and it's a selling job. I mean, you've got to remember that you are selling makeup, um, but you can work your way up within those companies and become a makeup artist for a brand. Again, you're just working with one range of makeup, but um, you can get to travel and certain companies like Mac, you know, you can get to assist key makeup artists on shows because a lot of uh, of the shows are sponsored by Mac. I think that's all of the kind of makeup careers I've covered, and all of them have pros and cons. You know, um, to become really successful in the film industry, you've got to really be able to kind of battle, and it takes a long time. You've got to really work your way up from the bottom to the top. There's a lot of travelling. You're away from home a lot, but obviously, if you make it, it's incredible. Um, same with fashion. You know, if you've always dreamt of doing really high fashion magazine covers and glossy magazines it's really hard work and it takes real nerve and determination to make it and 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 achieve success and there is a lot of traveling which is again a pro or a con depending on how much you like traveling out of living out of a suitcase um same with the more commercial stuff you like catalogs and things because you'll end up traveling tons and tons and tons which again can be a, a pro or a con with the fashion makeup artists and also film makeup artists, obviously there's a massive amount of money to be made. You can get contracts with really big makeup brands to be creative director and have, you know, be doing kind of designing makeup and it leads on to all sorts of other things. So on the pro side of it, it's it's very varied and very, very exciting. And, you know, it's very kind of, yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Um, now, with bridal makeup, the good thing is you can be based from home. So if you're someone that it's not really practical for you to travel, then that would be a really good career because you can really choose your own timetable. And if you're doing bride, then it's mainly weekends. It's a little bit more seasonal and you can kind of work in, say, family life and things around that as well. Same with if you're working um, for a particular one makeup brand you're a little bit more stable in your life that you can kind of, you're not flying off all over the place, you know, um, you can kind of, it's a bit more, you know, your schedule kind of ahead of, ahead of time. Um, so yeah, they've all got pros and cons. It really depends on what it is that you particularly love. What I say is that I know that not everyone can, that everyone that sets out to do film makeup and that's their dream, not everyone is going to end up being an Oscar winner. And not everyone who sets out to do want to be successful in high fashion is going to end up doing you know the cover of Italian Vogue and the cover of all the Vogues but unless you aim for that in the first place then you've got no chance of doing it and somebody's got to do it because somebody people do do these jobs and if that's your dream don't get sidetracked in a way by other things you know if you end up doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of the other you never really break through in the industry that it is that you're really keen on and it's about focusing on that industry and if you're into films and you should be watching films looking who the credits are trying to establish maybe which makeup artist work you really admire in film who are the production companies you know who are the people how can you get to work your way up in that industry you know you might end up being a runner in the beginning and then end up assisting a makeup artist, like being a third assistant and then a second assistant and then a first assistant and then you're getting to know everyone. Same with fashion, you know, it's looking in all the magazines, who are the makeup artists that you really like? Whose work do you think is good? Who are their agents? Where are their agents based? How can you sort of get there? The thing about fashion is you have to really be in the main cities, the Londons, the New Yorks, the Milans, the Paris, just because most of the magazine industry and the fashion industry is based around the kind of big cities. Um, so yeah, working away and finding out who are the people to get to know, how can you break in? It takes a long time, but unless you are focused on that one thing, you know, it's like if you want to be, if you want to do that, we all have to earn money. And believe me, I did jobs while I was working my way up. Um, I worked in an architect's office. I worked on a makeup counter for six months. I did all of this, but I was always, my main thing was testing and getting my portfolio together because the main thing is your portfolio. Without a portfolio, you're not really 
a makeup artist, you know, a successful one anyway, because you have to be able to show, if you're a bridal makeup artist, these are all the work that, this is all the work I've done, look at all the brides I've done, and then you become successful, you're experienced. Same with fashion, you know, or, you know, catalogue, you have to be able to show, look, this is all the work I've done, this is my portfolio, and in a way you're only as good as your latest you know your portfolio you're only as good really as the or, or the work you're doing now I could go on about this for a long time I don't want to make this film too long it's hard work but what I'm saying is decide which industry is your ideal because once you become successful in one industry you can always do a bit of other things afterwards because you've got your name once you've got your name and you're successful in that industry you can do other things because um, it just is easier. But when you're starting out, like if you go and work on a makeup counter because you're getting your kit together, which I did, don't go and work on a makeup counter for 10 years, you know, because there's nothing wrong with working on a makeup counter, but if that's not what you want to do, if you want to be doing films or you want to be doing fashion, then it's no point going to Mac and being there still 10 years later because you haven't made a go of it. And it is quite scary in a way. I remember being scared when I eventually took the plunge and was just testing and just doing little jobs to make money, but I didn't have like a regular income and it's terrifying, absolutely terrifying, but you kind of need to take that plunge. The other variation of this question that I'm getting three or four of a day, I'd love to be an editorial makeup artist, be in the fashion business in magazines, I'd love to work with celebrities, blah, 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 blah. Shall I set up a YouTube channel? Or normally they say to me, I'm setting up my YouTube channel now because I want to be a um, doing this type of work. What I say to that is, again, it's a completely different industry. It's, it's a different set of people. It's a different world. It's a different... Um, yeah, it's a different world, really. Now it's kind of become a career. Um, a YouTube makeup artist is a career, and you can become a partner, and you can make money out of it, and it can become your job, and it can become your full-time job. That is going to take up all of your time, and what you're not going to be doing is learning about your industry, starting to test, getting your portfolio together, and working your way into that industry. So to summarise, because now I'm just babbling on and on and on and on, I would like to say, to summarise, what is your end goal? Where, what's your dream? Where do you want to be in five years from now on your way to becoming a successful film makeup artist with a successful bridal business, with uh, successful in the music industry or the fashion industry? What is your absolute dream? We know we can't all achieve our absolute dreams, but we've got to try. Um, and I would say, What's your final destination? Don't get on the wrong train. Because you could spend 10 years on the wrong train and then think, actually, this is not what I wanted to do. What I always dreamt about was doing this particular thing. So I'd say try and get on the right train um, so you end up at the right destination. Because if for any reason, you know, life changes, things go, not everything works out. Life's like that. But if it doesn't, at least you knew that you tried and you went for the type of industry and you went for the goal that you really, really wanted. Because... You can't do everything. It's like time management. You know, you can't be successful in loads of different industries. You can't have a successful um, career in one thing and be successful in another thing, that things that aren't really related because there's different groups of people. There's only so much time that anyone's got in a day. And I would say focus, focus on what you want to do. If your dream is to be a YouTube makeup artist, fantastic, go for it. There's lots of ways of achieving that now if your dream is to be a fashion makeup artist editorial successful with magazine covers blah 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 successful in that industry then it's never been kind of in a way there's never been more information available you can go on the internet you can learn you can watch you can read magazines you can discover um, same with films you know you can watch documentaries about filmmaking you can write to all the production companies um, go for it just go for it. I really am going to stop now because um, I'm just going to bore everyone to tears. So good luck and just follow your dreams and um, good luck with it.